In the world of media, it's hard to imagine a faster paced shift than that of a radio news reporter. On a big day, they might be covering up to seven stories and filing several versions of each of those stories. Well, what does that mean to you, the news radio interviewee? Well, if you want to have your message heard and heard clearly, you've got to be on top of your game and moving almost as fast as they do. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. I'm Nafisa Kareem, I'm a reporter at CKNW, and it's about a quarter to six, and I've started for the day. We're going to follow Nafisa as she makes her way through a typical workday. As you can see, her shift begins on the run, and it picks up speed from there. All laid out for you, just start reading. Did you get my email, Tom? Ten minutes after arriving, Nafisa is going on air to talk about a story she was briefed on only minutes before. Nafisa Kareem, do we know this to be a fact? Well, we do know this to be a fact because this was sent to us via email at 8 o'clock last night by the VP. And now the real barrage of information begins. I need to talk to you. Me? Call the VIA um, folks, though. Well, we can try calling, and if it's not her, it's not her. I'm getting an answering machine. Here's how this probably went down. I'm trying to reach Doreen. The information is flying at the speed of light, and Nafisa has to catch it check it, and make critical decisions about its importance at that same speed. I think it's balanced. I mean, we've covered all the other leaders when they come here. I just wanted you to check with the media guys, the, you know, has the thing morphed at all? I can do Jack and then do Depps if, if Marcella's really got her heart set on this drug thing. After the meeting, it's back to the phones and the computers to dig for information, verify facts, set up interviews, and follow up leads. We all have files to check on, so sometimes we'll make phone calls about stories. They may not become a story now, but we're laying the legwork for stuff that could be a story in the future. And then it's out into the field. So there's always apple cores and, you know, empty bottles of water and things in the car. And I take a lunch with me because I never know if I'm going to be sent somewhere that doesn't have food or if I'm going to be sent to a murder scene and I have to stay there for six hours. I can't exactly leave to go to the Tim Ho's. And I always have, you know, extra underwear, a toothbrush, toothpaste. Nafisa has arrived to cover a big press conference with a politician on the election campaign trail. I'm Jack Layton and I'm running to be Prime Minister of Canada. Kareem stands at the back of the room, listening, writing, deciding on the focus of her story. During the news conference, Nafisa slipped out and filed a live story. Now she's about to write, cut, and send two new stories from her car. Back to the car. So what are you going to do there? Get out the computer and start working. Nafisa files different versions of the story to maximize the use of this report and to keep things fresh for upcoming newscasts. She'll vary a combination of clips from the news conference, she may send a choice of voice intros and bridges, and she'll send some suggested written copy for the newscasters as well. So now I marry his clip with my voiceover and pray that it's 35 seconds. If not, something's got to go. We've got to make room for Jack right here. Let's make uh, 10 seconds for him. It won't include a deficit when it's released on Sunday. Oh, 34 seconds! And now it's off to a press conference at the Vancouver police station. While the police spokeswoman is still delivering information, Nafisa slips into a hallway and files an up-to-the-minute report about the lead story at the police press briefing. Police say they were called by social workers because the teen hadn't returned to her foster home. They say after three hours of negotiations, sorry, three, two, one. They say after three hours of negotiations, the girl wouldn't let go of the baby and was in danger of smothering the child. Constable Jana McGinnis says the girl was warned before she was touched by by a taser, she was not shot from a distance, minimizing the risk of transfer to the baby, and she wouldn't comment on the mother's claim that she was being held down by three or four officers. Nafisa Kareem, CKNW News Talk 980 at VPD headquarters. And then she returns to the press conference, collecting even more information before sitting down upon its completion to file a live story directly to air. 
Terry, police say the incident happened on Monday when social workers called the VPD to deal with a mentally ill teen. Police say the girl, after three hours of negotiations, wouldn't let go of her baby and the baby was critically ill and the woman was putting herself in a position where she was in danger of smothering the child. Constable Janet McGuinness insists the girl was warned before she was touched with the taser and not shot from a distance. But this wasn't a situation where there were probes flying around. This was a localized application, and uh, there was no transfer. She wouldn't comment on the mother's claim that she was held down by three or four officers on a bed. Reporting live to Lisa Kareem, CKNW yeah. News Talk 980 yeah. at VPD yeah. headquarters. She's a juvenile herself, and then So did you go live into the newscast? Mm -hmm. That was live. As I was talking, people were hearing it on the radio. Yeah, I, I so there might be a delay, but yeah, that was live. Pretty amazing, isn't it? It's pretty low tech. You're holding a phone up to a speaker. I mean, there's no real magic involved. You just talk, 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 push play and pray you're in the right spot on the tape and then put it back to your ear, your ear and pray you don't drop the phone because I've done that before and it sounds really bad on live radio. Now it's back to the radio station to file at least two more stories and follow up on any one of a number of stories that are coming down the pike or are in progress. All the while, Nafisa's focus is on her listener. That's what a good story is all about. And it all comes down to how it affects the people, because at the end of the day, your listeners aren't listeners, they're people. They have their own um, biases, they have their own needs and wants and desires, and they listen to the news because they want to know how events affect them. So when you deliver a story, you have to deliver it in such a way that it actually touches them somehow. Tomorrow, she's back at it to do it all over again. As you can see, Nafisa's day never slows to more than a gentle run. You can now understand that if you are going to be a news radio interviewee, you'd better be prepared on a number of fronts. First, you are going to have to respond quickly. Minutes make a difference, and they will determine whether you'll be used in the story or not. Second, keep your clips super short and super focused and don't be afraid of saying the same thing a few different ways. There's a good chance your statements may be used for a variety of newscasts as long as your clips are meaningful and to the point. Third, don't get caught up in the whirlwind of the moment. If you don't know something, say so. It's better to be bypassed than to misrepresent a situation. You'll be doing the reporter, and more importantly, yourself a big favor. Authenticity and truthful information always ultimately wins the day.